Tuesday, when they need to tramp the Sharn for a pirate trail through in here, would it? That uh, was your appendix. Only worse, like, a wee thing no bigger nor your pinky, and it was going rotten inside you and pouring the poison around your system. Ah. Oh, eh? Uh, hey, will, will I cry the doctor? Oh, he's feathered, didn't he be daft? Lucky you were landlord that he got you an ambulance. That'd be his wife likely. I wrote to thank him. Huh? Uh, just a wee note. <clears throat> uh, the doctor said to me he'd no pain and so he'd no warning. All right. I should be dead. Oh, did he say that? No, I was just minding. I saw that Phil Thompson in the town when I was in for the train. <laughs> he's driving gloves on and he's jacket up till he's bum. <laughs> you think he'd never seen a fern road on his end? I just roared out the road to him. Aye, well, I, you'll not forget to muck out the bar the morning's morning. <laughs> mm. I can't abide folk that gets above themselves. Oh, I uh, broke to the observer. Uh, Oh dear, might like to read the local news a wee breath for home, if you like. Is that the only photograph they've got him? Eh? It's always the same one. Oh, well, there'll be, be no shortage of photos. I don't know, the photos us are calling it Downing Street, uh, and abroad, and at Buckingham Palace. But, uh, being borderers ourselves like, we, uh, <coughs> we like to see them at issues in the borders. That's the bell. Oh, uh, I better wheel. <laughs> Wouldn't you want one of the wee nurses checking me? It'll, uh, tell your mother you're looking fine then. Yeah, great. She's, uh, right sorry she couldn't be here, but, uh... Yeah, I know. I know. Tell her I'm fine. Thanks for the paper. Get up to help. I don't think so. It helps that we all muck in. Very short of staff. I don't take any interest in politics myself. They'll not let you lie there. They'll have you up tomorrow. I think they'll make an exception for me, being a terminal case. Huh? You're dying. <laughs> oh, bug it all up, will you? Lying in your bed reading bloody rubbish. I think you'd be by cowboys and Indians by now. Oh, they're not mine. The old guy in the end bed sent them up. Old Sammy. Him at the end. And well, he is dying. Hold you a bottle. Bala Luga's eat. You get thirsty after an operation. Are you visiting someone? I mean, I'm fine for drinks. My father was here this afternoon. You're lucky to be here. No pain, no warning. That's what they tell me. Yeah, it's the best and we can't see what's ahead of us. You were looking for help when you came knocking at our door. Didn't realize what you were doing. I didn't know what I was doing. I was out in my skull. Might have been at a party. There's something about a party. Oh, you've been at plenty of those. That's oh, all right till you fear your exams. Then the easy companions drop away fast enough. Easy companions? Well, fellowship's all right. If you choose the fellas. I'll remember that. <laughs> no, you won't. I get these places. There's a smell of death on them.
I'll tell you, someone's been brought in here for their own good. And people die in here. Baby's die. When it comes my time, you won't find me dying on a place like this. remember who I am or that interesting evening at Professor Grace Mount's or the little man who read us his poetry or that very pretty girl I've been ill we had a long talk <laughs> you told me your ambitions what you hoped for after university I don't remember I thought you were an interesting young man and then I heard you were ill. But you disappoint me. This is commonplace. I thought they were all cowboy stories. I got alone of them. Even for such stuff, this is poor. I remember Paris, young men far from home. A story was written to make a little money. Concerning a, a lady like that one on the cover and her victim who was quite willing, eager to suffer and obey. She did terrible things to him. She might have killed him. But it was all innocent daydreams, some wonder drug of science fiction. So when it was over, no blood, no regret. Just a man and woman on a warm summer evening, drinking a demi tasse. Wasn't that a better world to live in than this? No, not mine. It was the old guy in the end bed sent them up. He's got cancer. A man must find comfort where he can, when he's dying. But you and I should live in the real world. You're a poor student. When the vacation comes, I'll find you a job. No. I mean, I'll find something. But you don't want help. What it is to be young. That young man in Paris, when he was 20, he never slept with a woman. One day, he stripped himself naked and beat his bare flesh the leather belt and felt such joy. At last, I have something real, he said to himself. Now I live in the real world. Now I live in the real world. Did I hear you telling your father you'd got a job? Just for the holidays, I. Remember, you have to study. I'll study. Look. If it's the money, we'll manage. Oh, you have to study. How else are you ever going to make anything of yourself? Well, listen to you, you'd think I was daft. Everybody else manages to work and study. I'm not any different. Everybody else is not my son. I think I'll go meet Dad coming out of the cook. Even with one he'll make Ben's sermon should be due it by the time I get there. Well, if you want to. Just as well he's no relying on you for the rest of the year. Aye. It's a wonder they haven't made him an elder for faithful attendance. Um, I know a man about a farm. Maybe need to be something better than that to be an elder in Sir Colin's cook. Sir Colin! Sir Colin, you... Yeah. 
Thanks very much. You know they cost me an arm and a leg. King man starts his second week. I'd have bet with Muldoon you wouldn't get up this morning. I'd love to have spoken for. For Kilpatrick. Oh, come on, Jackie. You'll have to slip a slice under for me as well. Otherwise, it'll look as if you're playing favourites. I'm the only one Jackie slips a slice under. Give me a minute, will you? I'm as good looking as he is. I'll split what's under the grill with you. Only I get the first slice. That's a rule I know. Right, that's breakfast over. Peter's a set of 3.30. Toast of the town. Hey, what about Muldoon if he's in looking for sex? That's it, finished. Forgot something. Mine don't lift anything too heavy. Is that everyone away? Uncle Patrick's still in there. Is that right? I mean, you took this job and you could have got any other one. Well, there was another job I got offered, but I fancied this. Maybe I wanted to prove something. <coughs> prove you're a stupid bastard. This is a job you have to be fit today, son. He's still trying to chat her up. Should have more sense at his age. What did they teach you at the uni? That wee man's had more women than you've had wet dreams. And I'll tell you another thing. His name Mug. What would you mean by that? What I'm saying to you is, if you skive the way you've been doing that with your arm, I'll no warn you. It's a bit of a range. A wee accident for you. He's got a knack. Get driving. Oh, look, Alan Roffey. Come on, move it. Christ, that was close. Lucky you missed him. Oh, lucky for him. This big beauty would smash him like a meringue, no even leave a dent. Your eyes peeled for a man mount. Maybe hanging out a windy, peeling a banana. <laughs> Bloody typical, eh? I tell him the corner and he waits at a close. I tell you, you'll be quicker training a monkey. <laughs> well, you'll need to get a bigger fan. Can he see us? Hey, do you want us to get a bigger fan, eh? You don't see this one. <laughs> Why should the monkey do that? He's too stupid. Wouldn't he bet on it? I'm surprised he doesn't get angry about getting called Primo, I know. And he calls him Primo because it was some boxer. Carnera, heaviest world champion ever. They called him Ambling Alp. He started off as a furniture remover. To learn that in a class at the uni, you know? No. Guinness Book of Records. Right, lads. <laughs> Tap right. Old geezer name of Morrison. Right. Shift your arse, Jumbo. I hope you'll be careful with that. That's an antique, nearly. Don't worry, Mr. Morrison. Your stuff's in good hands. Join the professionals, eh? The professionals? You've been at it a week. Aye, and the monkey came the day before you did. Take the two years to shift this. Come on, sir. See Primo carrying that out by himself? Ah, she went a bloody circus. One piece. I thought it would split. Oh, no, it's a beautiful piece of furniture from the old days when Glasgow was the second city of the empire. Ugh. Not like today. Well, that thing's a liberty. Give you a rupture. <laughs> my dear lady wife bought this at an auction. Oh, it has great sentimental value. Of course, my daughter did not want me to bring it with me, but I told her she'd have to make room for it for her mother's sake. When a woman has a young family, it's inclined to make her a bit selfish. You know? Is your old lady a cabinet maker? I beg your pardon? It's all right, Mr. Morrison. What went up must go down, eh? 
We'll never do it. Yeah, even a flaming boy would give you a showing up. <laughs> Don't worry, sir, we'll manage. It's just a matter of planning. What I always say is, there's a knack to everything. <clears throat> Once you get a balance. <laughs> right, that's oh. it. Put it down. <sighs> oh. Right, take a break. Oh, Christ. He could die doing this. Oh, you, son. You're a horse. Eh? And you've earned your corn a day. No way! I was taking my my share at the front. And you were doing nothing, you bastard. You really are a stupid little prick, aren't you? For God's sake, that must have been like hitting a brick wall. You being careful. That is a valuable article of furniture. Aye, don't worry, Mr. Morrison. Treating her like a son. OK, lads, back to work. Hey, you two at the front this time. That's an awkward corner. Davy, up the back with me. Come on, move it. Was pushing down on us, right? <gasps> what will they say when we get back to the yard on our own? One of my professors said he could have got me a job in France. I thought I'd make more money at the furniture game. You thought wrong. This isn't the way back to the yard. I think I've broke something. Yeah, I'd be surprised if you hadn't. That's the infirmary in there. Hey, Primo. Thanks. What a way to go, eh? Killed by a wardrobe. Do you know what a soldier is, boy? He's somebody that does what he's told, even if it sticks in his craw. If he doesn't, He's no use to himself or anything he believes in. We were only shifting furniture, for Christ's sake. It wasn't the SAS. You think I haven't done that? I've fucking done that! I've done things you wouldn't believe to prove I was a man. You want to get out of this? Go home to your mammy. You'll never believe how lucky you are. <laughs> 